Today, we will be discussing command line tools for basic analysis on BaseSpace. Specifically, we will be discussing our two available tools, BaseSpace Command Line Interface, commonly known as CLI, and BaseMap. Let's get started. Here is our agenda. First, I'll provide an introduction to each tool, discuss their intended use and their requirements. Then I'll discuss BaseSpace CLI exclusively, which I'll refer to just as CLI from here on out. During this portion, I'll also talk about installing and authenticating CLI to use with your BaseSpace account. After that, I'll provide demos for real CLI use cases. Keep in mind, the demos will mostly be on the Windows command line, or CMD, but they will be the same for Mac OS and Linux. I'll also make sure to point out when they're different for those systems. Afterward, I'll discuss our second tool, BaseMount. Like the CLI portion, I'll discuss installation and provide demos for just BaseMount. These demos will be done on the Linux command line. Finally, I'll provide links to our resources so you can continue exploring these tools on your own. And one last note, the commands used throughout this presentation can be found on the last slide. You should have received a PDF file of this presentation by now. You can turn to the last few slides to follow along during the demos. Okay, let's jump in. Let's talk about our two tools. Keep in mind that our command line tools are actively maintained. This means features may change, but their intended use will remain the same. We work to update the documentation as soon as changes occur or features are added. Okay, let's talk about CLI. CLI supports scripting and programmatic access to BaseSpace. This means you can use common command line commands as well as CLI specific commands to perform operations. If you are new to using the command line, using CLI is a great way to build and strengthen your skills. CLI is geared for automation, bulk operations, and other routine functions. When we say automation and bulk operations, we mean downloading runs and uploading FASTQ files. CLI can be used independently or in conjunction with BaseMount. Using the two together minimizes the need to toggle between your command line shell and the browser. CLI can be used on Linux, Mac OS, and Windows operating systems. Keep in mind that the shell commands will be specific to the OS command line, meaning Windows MD commands will be different from Linux or Mac terminal commands, but the CLI commands themselves will be the same. We'll see examples of this in our demos. Lastly, CLI does not require admin access. This means that any user that can download files from the internet can download and install CLI on their system. Now let's provide a quick overview to BaseMount. BaseMount allows you to explore through runs, projects, samples, app results, and analyses through the command line exactly as you would with any other file system. You're likely already familiar with runs and projects in your BaseSpace account. But within a project, we have samples, app results, and analyses. BaseMount allows you to interact with those entities just like you would with directories and subdirectories in a file system. BaseMount uses a mount point. The root of the mounted file system mimics the structure of the BaseSpace API. This is how we're able to browse a BaseSpace account like a file system and access directories within runs and projects. BaseMount provides access to the raw files at various directories. With BaseMount, you can access all files associated with a sample. These files include downstream analysis files like FASTQ, SAMs, and BCFs, along with summary report files in other formats. These files would be produced by a particular app analysis that was performed on a sample or group of samples. An example of an analysis app could be any of our Dragon apps, like Germline Somatic or RNA Pipelines. You can then access files at the block level without having to download the entire content. So for example, you can preview a FASTQ file in your shell 
with Linux commands without having to move it or download it. JSON can only be used in Linux operating systems. This means that some level of fam familiarity with the command line will be necessary. However, if you are new to Linux, the commands used in the base mount demos can help you get more practice. And lastly, base mount does require admin and root access. This is mainly because base mount allows for read access and some write access to folders in your base base account. Let's briefly compare CLI and base mount. The ability to browse a base base account through the command line is exclusive to base mount. CLI does not provide this functionality. However, with CLI, we can perform actions like listing our runs and projects and data sets, which we'll see in the demos, but it's not quite the same as being able to browse our accounts or our account contents like we can with base mount. With both CLI and base mount, we can download base base entities. This includes downloading full runs and projects, downloading a part of a project like a specific app session, or downloading all of the files associated with a sample or just an individual sample file like a FASTQ file or a BAM file. CLI grants us the ability to bulk upload FASTQ files and app session files. App session files are files like manifest or targeted bed files that may be required for a particular app like targeted resequencing. BaseMount does not allow us to upload FASTQ files, but we are able to upload app session files. We'll see demos of uploading FASTQ files later on. CLI allows us to launch apps while BaseMount does not. Additionally, we can delete data with both tools. And lastly, as we've already discussed, CLI can be used with most operating systems while BaseMount can only be used with Linux. Now that we know a little about both tools, let's focus on CLI. Just a reminder, if you want to follow along with the demos, the commands we'll be using are on the last few slides. Okay, let's talk about installing CLI. Installation is pretty simple. CLI can be installed directly via the command line with packages like WGET. WGET is standard for Linux, but you may have to do additional downloading and installing to get this on Mac or Windows. Another similar package is Homebrew for Mac. If you do not have one of these packages available or pre-installed, we do have an alternate, alternative installation method. In this method, we, were, we would go ahead and create our directory for our CLI executable files. We'll then download the executables and move those files to the designated directory, which we created above. Basebase CLI consists of two scripts, BS and BSED. Most functionality is accomplished with BS, with the BS script, um, but having BSCP is also helpful. Once we have our scripts in our designated directory, we'll need to go ahead and grant permissions. Um, this is your standard chmod type of step. Um, also note that this is not actually necessary to do in Windows. Once we have our scripts in our designated directories, and the permissions have been properly added, we can then authenticate our base base instances so that we can actually perform work using CLI. And lastly, the process is similar in all operating systems. Lastly, again, uh, CLI does not require root or admin access, but you will need to have access or read and write access to the, to the directory that you're going to use to, to put your CLI files in. Okay, so let's take a brief look at our alternate installation path um, for CLI. So here we go. Okay, so um, like in the instructions, I'm gonna go ahead and create a folder and I'm gonna name it bcli and this is where I'm going to actually put my script that I'm going to grab. Then I'm going to open my browser. I'm going right to the CLI developer page. And right here in this section, we can see the actual um, commands that you would use in the command line to download the packages. So each one is a little bit different, but they use wget. 
Oh, you can scroll up and you can go to this link here to see some more examples. Okay, but since we're going to focus on this alternate installation, I'm going to just go ahead and grab this URL here under the Windows uh, command. And I'm going to paste it into my browser. And my download started. Okay. So that grabs the BS script. Let me go ahead and grab the BSCP, BSCP script as well. So I'm going to copy this URL. Okay. And I'm going to paste it in. And that download is going to start as well. Okay, so it looks like my download's completed. Let me go ahead and minimize it. I'm going to open my directory that I created, and I'm also going to open a new folder browser. There we go. Okay, and I'm going to go to my downloads, and I'm going to move those two scripts out of the downloads folder and into the designated folder that I created on my desktop. Okay, I'm done here. Okay, now I have my two scripts where I want them, so I'm going to open the Windows command line. So here I just typed uh, the window key R, but you can also uh, type in the window and write CMD to open this up. Okay, I'm going to grab this directory path, and I'm going to CD into it, paste it. Okay, and now I'm going to type DIR just to make sure that my files are here and I see them here. Great. And I'm going to go ahead and clear this. And just note that I don't have to actually grant permissions because I'm working in Windows, but you would have to in uh, Mac and Linux. And here what I did, I just typed uh, the BS dash dash help, and that just ensures that I'm able to see all of the help options, meaning that I have the scripts available to work with. It also shows me how I'm supposed to use this script um, for actual use. Okay, let me clear this. And I'm just going to do the same thing again with the BSCP script, and I'm going to type dash dash help, just so I can see all of the different options um, that I can include or use with my command, including uh, actual command usage itself, like we see here, BSCP options. Okay. Great. Yeah, and all of this information, I encourage you to go through the help because it really will help you know how to use uh, these scripts. Okay, so now let's go ahead and move forward. So one thing we can do as soon as, soon as we download our script is we can type bs dash dash version so we can see what version of the script we downloaded. So here I see that I have uh, 10.8 and this, is, this was built in April of this year. Okay, so now that we have our scripts available and, and now that we've downloaded our scripts and they're available for use, the next step that we're going to take is actually authenticating our BaseBase account. So as some of you may be familiar, we have different levels of accounts available. We have our personal, professional, and enterprise, and I'm going to briefly talk about how we're going to authenticate all of these. So um, authenticating your personal account is the easiest. You're just going to use the BS auth command. Once we uh, start authenticating our professional accounts or our work groups, we're going to have to create config files in order to properly designate uh, which work group we're actually going to be using. So for this, I would use the command uh, BS auth minus C and then work group name. Um, I encourage you to use your actual work group name so that way you can keep track of your config files but you really can name it whatever you'd like. Lastly, to authenticate an enterprise account, um, we have the script, uh, sorry, we have the command down here. So uh, the command looks like this. You type bs auth dash dash config, and I could have just as easily used dash c, but I just want to make sure that I include as many options as possible. So um, dash dash config, and then again, I'm going to give it the work group name. And this time, since it's an enterprise account, I have to include that private domain or that URL um, for that particular enterprise instance. Okay, so here we're going to show um, how we're going to authenticate our personal account. Okay, so I'm going to type BS auth, and I'm actually going to look at the help first because the help does show me the different options that I can use with the authenticate, so I can even use the full word authenticate and that will work as well. 
Okay, so let me go ahead and clear this. And BS off, and I'm just going to hit enter. And it's going to return this authentication link, which I'm going to have to copy and paste into the browser. So I'm going to copy that. Okay, bring up my browser. And here I'm already logged into my account, and I'm just checking to make sure it says personal and I'm not in my work group. Okay, so now I can go ahead and paste in that authentication URL. And I'll go ahead and accept this. And let's minimize. Okay, so on the prompt after you've authenticated, it's going to say welcome and then your name. Um, because my account is the tech support account, it says welcome tech support, but had I been using my own personal account, it would say welcome Anna or Anna Sanchez. Now let's talk about authenticating our work group. So here we go, we're going to type BS off dash C, and I'm going to name my work group config file TS work group for tech support work group. Going to hit enter. And like before, um, a URL is returned, and I'm going to go ahead and copy that. And now in my base base account, I see that I'm no longer in personal, I'm in this work group. So let me paste my URL. And I'm going to go ahead and accept. And I'm going to minimize. And now here's the difference. So we see that it recognizes that it's uh, tech support, but it also will then say that you are logged in as tech support work group, meaning I'm logged in as the um, as, as the work group that I was configuring. Okay, and lastly, let's take a look at authenticating our enterprise account. So as many of you might be familiar with that, that have an, an enterprise account, this is what the sign-in page will look like. So I'm just going to go ahead and sign in. Okay, here we go. Okay, so I'm in my enterprise account, I'm an, and I'm in my personal space of my enterprise account. So I'm going to go ahead and authenticate this. So I'm going to type yes off minus C, and I'm actually going to name this Ent Personal. So that way I know that this is uh, the config associated with my personal space in my enterprise account. And I'm going to go ahead and grab the URL up here for my private domain, and I'm going to paste it in. And I'm going to hit enter. And here is my URL. So just before, we're, we're still going to have uh, that authentication URL that we're going to need to paste in. Okay. I'm going to accept. Okay, and let's minimize this. Okay, and now it says welcome and since this is my um, personal space in my enterprise domain. So now I'm going to switch over to one of my work groups on my enterprise domain. Okay, and I'm going to authenticate this as well. So I'm going to type BS off minus C. And now I'm going to name this Ent Work Group. And then I'm going to have to paste that URL again. So remember, this, this is specific for enterprise accounts. If you have one, this is, these would be the steps that you would take to authenticate your account. So there's my URL. I hit Enter. And again, I get this authentication URL returned. I'm going to paste it in. Okay. Okay. So just like before, now it says again, welcome Anna Sanchez, and it says that I'm logged in as my tech support work group, uh, and this is all associated on my enterprise account. Okay, so for those of us that have several um, configs at the same time, we can go ahead and type this command, bslist config. And here it shows me all of the config files that I just authenticated in my previous um, demos. So the default is going to be my personal space on the public domain. But then I also have all these other work groups that I authenticated. 
and I can actually access those accounts. Um, they're going to be in my home directory in a hidden directory called Space Space, and all of those config files are going to be here. And these config files, they just contain the access tokens or basically the authentication um, that we just performed in order to access our accounts. Okay. Okay, so now that we have uh, CLI installed and authenticated for all of the different accounts, let's actually move into a functionality and a few demos. So again, just to review our CLI functionality, um, we can download data. So this means that we can download runs either fully or partially. Um, it also means we can download projects. Again, we can download full projects. We can download certain app results or, or certain uh, files associated to a sample. The CLI also we can upload data. This means we're going to upload FASTQ files, bulk upload, um, and we can upload uh, app session files. Again, these are going to be like your manifest files, your targeted beds, and even any custom genome files that you're going to have that you may want to use with an app later on. Um, CLI also allows us to launch apps and delete data. Okay, so let's take a look at downloading a run. So to download a run, we can use either the BS script or the BSCP script. Uh, the general command for using the BSCP script looks like this. BSCP minus V, the URL, and then the directory. So the, the directory is where you're actually going to put uh, the run that you're downloading into. And with the BSCP script, you can use options like dash dash exclude, or dash dash include, um, which can be useful if let's say you don't want the thumbnail images um, to come up with your download from, from base base. And then here is the general command to use the BS script. It's going to be BS download run minus I and the run ID. And then it's going to be minus O for the directory where you want this uh, run to go into. This one does not require a second authentication, and we'll see that in our demos that when you use the BSCP script, you will have to authenticate, but you will have to uh, use the authentication URL again. Um, but with the BS script, script, you will not have to. So in the BSCP script above, we talk about needing the URL uh, for the run, and that's going to be this portion here. So it's going to be basically up until the run ID. And for the BS script, we talk about needing just the run ID, and the run ID is going to be this number here that appears after runs. Okay, so let's take a look at downloading a run, and in this instance, we're going to use the BSCP script. So the first thing I'll do, I'm just going to create a, a directory here, and I'm going to call it iSeq run, since I know that I'm going to download an iSeq run. And this is going to be where I'm going to put um, those files into. So let me go ahead and open CMD again. Hit OK. OK. So now I'm going to change directory. I'm actually going to go directly into where I want my download to go into. So I'm going to CD and into that directory. OK. And I'm going to use the path to my script, so I'm going to paste that in, and then I'm going to just put slash bscp. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and type minus v, and I'm going to grab this URL up until the run ID that I'm going to copy, and I'm going to paste it in, and then I'm already in, oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to type dash dash exclude equals star Dot JPEGs. And what this means is that I'm ex that I would be excluding any files or the that are uh, images, so the thumbnails. But I decided not to, so let me. I removed it, and then I'm going to put dot slash for uh, this directory. And like I explained before, when you use this script, you do have to use that authentication link again. So I'm going to put that in here, and I'm going to accept. Okay. And the download starts. So as we can see here, it's downloading everything um, that was uploaded with that run. So this is going to be all of our base call files and all of our thumbnail images along with any run metric files associated as well.
Once the run completes, uh, your, your Windows CMD command will look like this. Um, it will tell you at the bottom the total number of files that were downloaded and it will give you some additional information. And then in that uh, folder that you designated to download the run into, it's going to look just like a run would off, coming off of the instrument in the D drive. Okay, so let's take a look at downloading a run using the DS script this time. So here I'm going to be grabbing a run that's in a work group. Okay, let me minimize this. Okay, so I'm going to do yes dash dash config. And I'm going to use that TS work group config file and I'm going to list my runs. And I see my two runs here and I even can list the ID, which is great. And here's that run that I want to download. So I'm going to copy that. Copy that ID. Then I'm going to use the script BS download run dash I, and I'm going to go ahead and paste that ID in. And it's O for my output directory. And like before, I'm going to use this IC run directory. So I'm going to go ahead and put in the path. Okay. There we go. Okay, and I hit enter, and it takes a little bit. Here we go. And then the run starts to download. So it does look different from BSCP, um, but it's still going to download the same amount of information. It's still going to download those exact BCL um, files and thumbnails and everything that we, that we had in the previous run. Once that's complete, um, your, your CMD command line will actually look like this. So it looks a little bit different. It doesn't quite look like the command line after the BSCP script is ran, um, but you still will have the same information. And then looking at your directory, again, where we put our run, um, it looks just like a run, like the run structure that we would expect on the instrument, um, and it has all of the same files as well. Okay, now that we understand how to download a run, let's talk about downloading a project using CLI. So the general command, um, we're going to use the BS script, and the general command looks like this. It's BS download project minus I, and it's going to be the project ID. Then it's minus O and the destination directory for where we want that project or those files to, to go into. With this command, we can use options like dash dash extension and designate the extension of the file types that we wish to grab. Um, in this case, I'm showing uh, fastdo.cz. You could also do BCF or genome BCF or BAMS or any other, um, any other file type that you'd like. And of course, you can also use the BS download project dash dash help to see exactly how those files are going to be um, how, your, how those files can be downloaded and what options you can use for them. Okay, so let's take a look at our demo. And before we download, I actually want to show this one command, BS Who Am I? And what it does is it shows us who our, where our authentication is. So if I just type BS Who Am I, it's going to show me the default. Um, authentication, but if I do bs dash dash config and do ts work group, who am I? It's going to show me that this is the authentication uh, associated with the ts work group, which is where my run is. So this works. Let me clear that. Okay, so here I can do bs dash dash config, and I'm going to type ts work group to invoke my, my config file. And I'm going to do list projects. And here are my two projects. Okay, and I can grab this project ID here. Okay, and I can start my download. So BS download project minus I. Let me paste that in, paste that ID that I copied from above, dash O for my output directory, and here's my 
directory that I created in my FASTQ directory. So I'm going to type out that location. Okay. And in this case, I'm going to go ahead and type that dash dash extension command equals fastq.gz. So I'm only going to grab the fastq files in that folder, and I'm going to hit enter. And it does take a few seconds um, for us to see anything on our command line, but it's coming. Let's see. Okay, and here we go. So now I see that these uh, FASTQ files started downloading, and this will continue working until the download is complete. Okay, and once the download is complete, um, like before, similar to what the command line prompt looks like after you finish downloading a run, you're going to get basically just your prompt back, and you're going to see just the last few files that were downloaded. So from here, Okay, I see that my files are here. And then I can actually go into the directory and I can see that inside of here I have all of these folders with my FASTQ files inside of these folders. And that's, that's okay, but I actually want to move all of these files and I'm going to put them all in the same folder instead of having subfolders. And what I wanna do here is I wanna programmatically move them. So I'm going to use a script that is not a CLI script at all. It's just um, some functionality that Windows has. And I'm going to use it to go ahead and move those files. So I'm going to type this um, short script. It's called it's a CD slash D. And then I put in the the path, the directory where my fast two files are. And then I hit enter. Then I type just a small loop for slash R percent D in R meaning everything. Do you move? And I'm going to put this in quotes, percent D. So that's the, uh, what we saved before. And I'm going to move it into this directory I'll fast Q. So I'm just going to grab that path and paste that in. Okay, so now that went ahead and moved all of my FASTQ files, here they are, they're already in the directory. So it moved all of my FASTQ files from those subdirectories into that one directory, um, which is just a little bit easier for me to manage my FASTQ files if I have them all in one spot. Um, again, this is not a CLI function, um, and it does grab everything that was in that directory, including this file, but I can go ahead and delete all these subdirectories that I no longer need. And other um, operating systems, they do offer similar shell commands where you can go ahead and just programmatically move everything out of the subdirectories. So um, I find this pretty useful. I hope you do too. Okay, now that we know, we know how to download runs, we know how to download projects, now let's talk about uploading FASTQ files with CLI. So uploading FASTQ files requires using the BS script. And the general command structure looks like this. You're going to type vs dataset upload minus p, and we're going to put in a project ID number, and then we're going to uh, point to the files that we're going to upload. So the project folder that we're going to be putting in here must already exist on base space. So we will have had to create this project folder in order to, to upload these FASTQ files. Now, a situation where you might find that you need to upload these FASTQ files would be let's say that you started a run, but you forgot to send it to base base. So you performed analysis locally, um, but you need those files in base base. This is how we would go ahead and upload those files. Okay, so let's take a look here. So I have these FASTQ files in this directory and I'm going to, I'm actually in the directory already. So I'm going to use the path to my BS script and I'm going to type data set, upload, minus P. 
And here's my project ID that already exists on the DaySpace account. Okay. And I have to use this dash dash recursive and then everything here. So that dash dash recursive, that's, that's a CMD uh, command. But if you're on Linux or even on Mac, it might just be dash R to recurse through the folder. Okay, and as soon as I hit, um, I hit enter, you can see that the upload is actually pretty fast. It already has created three of my FASTQ files. They're already uploaded on Spacebase and it's already moving on to the last one. And my upload is complete. That's it. So as you can see, it's really, really quick to upload files. Um, does not take too long and it's so much faster than, than uploading one at a time on uh, the base base UI itself. Okay, so now let's see what this actually looks like on base base. So you will have the, these uh, base base CLI analyses, and each analysis belongs to one file. And I can go into the bio samples now and go to data sets. And I can click on my data set and hover over, and I can see that I have my, my R1 and my R2. Uh, for FASTQ files for this particular sample. So that's pretty great. It was really, really quick. And again, you can do this directly, um, directly from your instruments. Let's say you're using a benchtop instrument and you use local run manager to generate your FASTQ files. You would be able to use these scripts and do exactly uh, this upload just as quickly. Okay, let's uh, go ahead and switch gears and let's talk about base mount. So um, like CLI, let's run through some uh, base mount installation and then we'll jump into some demos. So installation for base mount is even easier than installing CLI. Um, you have to just go to our site. So we go to basemount.basebase.illumina.com and you're gonna click the install tab at the top of the page. And that's going to show you this URL, and we're uh, going to copy and paste it directly into your Linux terminal. So, so, so this is um, Linux, Linux specific only. So we will just completely copy this command, and that'll help us install right away. Okay. Once we have uh, base mount installed on our Linux systems, we then have to create a mount point for our account. So first, let's talk about creating our mount point for our basic account. So we're going to make a directory in the Linux environment. Once that directory is available, we're going to use the command base mount and then the directory name. Like with CLI, you're going to, it's going to return an authentication URL, and we're going to copy and paste that into the browser. Then we're going to confirm that we're in our personal space or, or whatever space we're looking to um, create the mount point for. Then we're going to receive confirmation in the command line environment that, that um, the authentication and that our mount point actually worked. So let's take a look. Okay. So one thing to note right away, this looks very similar to the Windows CMD, but I'm actually using PuTTY and I'm logged into my Linux server. So. Here we go. I'm going to use this command uh, make directory and I'm going to call it ts space space. And now I'm going to type base mount and then ts space space that directory that I just created and pass it through. And then it returns this um, base mount artwork. And below here we have our URL that we can copy. And here I'm in my personal account confirmed. I'm going to paste that URL just like what we saw for CLI. Accept, and we're going to minimize. So here for base mount, it actually just says it worked and your identification has been saved. And that's pretty much it. Your, your mount point is now ready to go for your personal account. So now let's go ahead and do the same thing for our work group. So we're going to make a, a new directory in our Linux environment. In this case, uh, I'm going to make a directory called CS work group. And this time we, we're going to use the command base mount dash dash config and then the name of the config. And then we have to pass our, uh, our directory that we just created in the step above. So similar to 
CLI, we're still going to name our config file. I would still recommend naming it your TS workgroup or your, the name of your workgroup so that way you can keep your configs uh, straight. And like before, you're going to get an authentication URL that's going to be returned. And you're going to copy and paste that into the browser. And then we're just going to confirm and receive confirmation in the, in the Linux environment that it was saved. So let's take a look. Again, here I'm in PuTTY, and I'm just going to list, so I have my TS base base and my TS workgroup, and I'm going to do base mount dash dash config, TS workgroup, that's the name of the config, and I'm going to pass through that directory, that TS workgroup. Okay, and here's my URL, authentication URL. I'm going to copy that, confirming that I'm in the workgroup. I'm going to paste it. Okay. I'm in here, going to accept, minimize this. And like before, it just says it worked um, and my authentication has been saved. So, so one major difference here, um, although we're still using config files just like we did for CLI for installation, we're not actually gonna call our config files anymore. We're going to access specific spaces of our base base account. Um, through those directories that we created. So that's why it's important that you name your directories, um, something that allows you to know whether you're going to be working through your personal account or your professional or your, or your work group. Okay, so now that we have our mount points available um, through base mount, let's go ahead and take a look at some functionality. Again, key functions of base mount, we're able to browse our base base account via the mount point. We can download base base apps like runs, projects, and individual files. We can upload app session files, we can, and we can delete data. So let's talk about downloading, um, downloading files like FAST2 files through base mount. So we're going to access our mount point from there, from our mount point, we then are going to have the options to go into the runs or project, and we're going to go into the project. Then we're going to go into a directory called app session, and then we're going to go to a FASTQ generation session. Then we're going to use this general command to actually download those FASTQ files from that directory. So the command is cp minus r and we're going to recurse through everything in the first directory. We're gonna go into the files directory after that, and then grab everything that has the start, um, that has the GZ um, extension. And then we're going to designate our destination directory. So one thing to note here, that CP or copy command is that's strictly a Linux command. Um, what BaseMount is allowing us to do, it's allowing us to access those directories and then we're using actual Linux commands to perform our work. And then once we invoke this command, the files will be copied to the location on the server. Okay, so let's take a look at this here. So here I'm in my account and I want to grab the FASTQ files for this mini C project. So I have two sessions here, but TSC15 and a FASTQ generation session. I'm only interested in the FASTQ files. So I'm going to list my directories and I'm going to go into my mount point. So that's the TS space space. And here I'm going to list again. So I have my project readme and my runs. So I'm actually going to go into projects because ultimately that's what I want to do. I want to get my project. Then I'm going to go into that mini C project that would be here. And then I'm going to list. Okay, and I want to go into my app sessions. So I'm going to CD app sessions. And I'll go ahead and list it again. And I mean, you can list so that you get used to, you know, working through this system. Um, but once you get used to it, you don't have to list at every level. So I'm going to grab that I'm going to go into that uh, FASTQ generation session and grab all the files. So I'm going to go ahead and type my command. It's cp minus r. And I'm going to go into that FASTQ session. And I'm going to put in a star. 
and then file. So that means that I'm going to go one directory deep, go into that files directory, and then if from that files directory, I'm going to grab everything with the GZ extension. And I'm going to put these FastQ files in this location on my server data run tech support. And okay. And when you actually execute the command, um, it doesn't look like anything is really happening, but you see that you have, you know, your, you see that your prompt isn't returned, and that's how you know it's working. Okay, and then here I can go into my mounted drive and I can see that my files are starting to appear. So um, if you have your server mounted, uh, you can definitely access it and take a look and see while the files are, are actually uh, being downloaded. Okay, so once uh, the download complete or the copying really completes, the FastQ files will be in the server location, and you can list them, and we can see them, and they're going to look like this. Um, so here I have all of my FastQ files, and then in my mapped uh, drive here, I can see the same FastQ files just in, in a familiar window browser as before. Okay, so now let's talk about downloading a full project with base mount. So it's going to be very similar to downloading FastQ files. We're going to go into the project and we're going to go into the app session. We're going to use the same general command. So, so essentially we're going to copy all of the files in a project and then put them in a destination in our server. Okay, so let's take a look. So now I want to actually grab all of the files that are present in this folder. So both the FastQ files and the Truth Aid Tumor 15 files that are here. So I'm going to go back into the project folder. And I'm going to go into that mini seek folder. Tab it out. Okay. And then here I'm going to go into app sessions. Okay, so I'm going to grab all of the files that were produced for these two sessions. So I'm going to type CP minus R to read. So I'm going to refer to the copy everything from this directory, from the next directory, in the files directory, and all of the files in the files directory. And again, I'm going to put it into the server location data run export project. And I'm going to hit enter. And like before, you can't really tell that much is happening, but it's working. As long as you don't have your your prompt, you'll know that it's working. And here I'm accessing my and here I'm actually seeing it. It's it's uh, the files are appearing uh, as we browse through. Okay. So once uh, the copying completes, you can go ahead and into the project to that server location, and you can actually take a look and see everything that you've downloaded. Um, there's even additional, there's even an additional folder that I grabbed inside of there, and, and there's uh, library-specific information here. So here we, we see all these different file types. We see BAMs, genome BCS, summary files summary.csd files. So, so we have all the different file types that we would um, be able to see in our base base accounts, but now it's actually on our server location and we can, you know, do additional, actually analyze uh, our results from these. Okay, so let's wrap up here with some final thoughts on our command line tool. So, as you've seen, CLI and BaseMount can increase efficiency when uploading and downloading data from BaseBase. As you're probably familiar, uh, uploading or downloading data um, can be a bit tedious on the UI, and CLI and BaseMount definitely um, help mitigate that a lot. Um, CLI can be used with most operating systems. We've seen that as well. 
Um, BASEMAT allows you to browse through your base base account like any other file system through Linux. Um, I didn't get the opportunity to show you, but you can actually look at files um, through the command line without having to actually download anything. So if, if, if you wanted to quickly look at something on a file, you can do that without grabbing it uh, through BASEMAT. And then um, finally, using base base CLI and BASEMAT together will allow for performing common, oper common operations on base base most efficiently and easily. So you can really see the benefit um, when you have both BASEMAT and CLI installed, you, you really don't need to go to the browser at all. Um, as a matter of fact, you probably just need to go to the browser just to authenticate and install, and that's about it. After that, you can probably just work straight out of the command line using both tools. And I wanted to just discuss some additional resources. So at the very beginning of the presentation, I pulled up the CLI, uh, the CLI page. Um, this page is wonderful. It's full of additional documentation, and it, there, there's even some worked examples that you can uh, go through as well to really increase your efficiency with CLI. Same with BaseMount. The BaseMount uh, site also has a lot of worked out examples and even some short videos that can help. And of course, we also have our support bulletins um, online. So we have our downloading runs from base base, and this definitely explains how to use uh, CLI. Well, it, it, it'll show you the commands to use CLI um, for downloading, and you can have an upload fastq files to base base, and that'll also show you the same CLI commands that we discussed here today. Thank you, everybody, uh, for listening in today, and I hope you enjoyed today's presentation. Thank you.